welcome to the NBA Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Burn the witch! Why? Why would you do that? Because Tristan Taylor told me to. <laughs> I, I don't see nothing wrong with that. Also joining us is Torterra. Not all witches are bad, you know. Oh, great. Hashtag not all witches. Uh, likely story. <laughs> Oh, boys. But anywho, in this episode, we are going to review Little Witch Academia, The Enchanted Parade. Also, this is a Patreon-sponsored video by Jeffrey. Thank you so much. And so, yeah, before we head in, I, I think it's um, nice, or I think I could just explain a bit about this, uh, the production by about this movie. Let's see. This movie was funded by a Kickstarter campaign, and it was funded up to... 625,518 and so on like this is kind of interesting let's just say that a lot of people really 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 like the Little Witch series hmm. okay the way you described that made it sound wrong <laughs> what is it they really 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 like it's like you don't say that unless it's like what are we talking like or like I, I no no all right <laughs> oh you mean like like or like like Wait, now we're talking about Legend of Zelda villains. <laughs> There's so many likes. Yes, it's like a YouTube video. <laughs> By the way, please like and subscribe to this <laughs> podcast. Oh, boys. Okay, this dude is getting away. Anyway, let's do what we do best. So, first impressions are in order. Silver, what do you think? Well, I enjoyed this. I I haven't gotten to see a lot of my of Little Witch Academia, other than the thoroughly confusing uh, first attempt we made. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. But, Sorry, go ahead. Uh, but I have enjoyed what I've seen. And most important of all, I thought this was a really well done special with uh, a lot of great character moments. There are moments where it's easy to not like the lead heroine. Oh, yeah. That's probably the greatest hurdle for this story. Because a lot of people, if they don't like a character, boom. Close. Done. True. No, no worries. But I enjoyed it. And even even the Akko uh, ma- redeemed herself in my eyes by the end. Yeah, true that, true that. I, I totally agree with that. And Tara, what about you? I really enjoyed the special. I mean, it, it was great to go back to watch Little Witch Academia, and I enjoyed it from the beginning to end. Although, like Sylvie so said, it was at least one part that I thoroughly did not really enjoy, but we'll get to that later. But in the end, though, I really enjoyed it and how, like Sylvie so said, Akko redeemed herself. True that, true that. And I'm in the same boat because I enjoyed the movie like overall the overarching story is a a plus for me but the Aku character at the very beginning oh my god like if how do i put this an analogy that i can make for pony fans out there is just imagine pinkie pie at her worst times that to 11 (laughs) but yeah that's my impressions but i did like the episode I, i i did like um who was that new character? Amanda. Amanda O'Neill. She's cool. She's really cool. Well, we'll, we'll get to that. I'm bad with names, so I'll have to clar- I'll have to confirm and clarify when yeah. we get into it. And that is why I open up all the characters that matter in this episode on the wiki page. <laughs> uh, but anywho, uh, if you guys have not watched this uh, special and are interested in watching, pause here and go watch. It's on Netflix, by the way. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed it. So anyway, we start off the movie with our leads in class learning about fusion magics and whatnot. Like, this is interesting. Can you do the dance, though? (laughs) Fusion! Ha! But usually when I do fusion, it uses a spell card called polymerization. So, hmm. And then your opponent just has like a, a... Flipping penguin or return to hand or something, and you spent three cards and it's just destroyed by one, and it's so unfair. I know, right? <laughs> Yugi or humor, everybody. Uh, but anywho, Ako and her friends are in a class about fusioning and stuff, and Ako and Sushi can't agree on the ingredient that they want to put into the chalice to make a fusion. It seems that other people created cute little elephant bee hybrids or whatever it is. And so on. And Aku seems to have a brownie that she calls it, but it's actually a goblin. 
It's a living creature. She wants to throw a living creature oh, into this plants cauldron. Plants kind of I living know. creatures too. I, but they're not they're sentient. Not sentient. Yeah. Oh wow, Jinx. I know. <laughs> What's but this? You, you, th- you throw in a living sentient creature that can feel pain into into this boiling cauldron. What is wrong with you, Arco? I know. You sick. <laughs> you sick. I would have expected that from you in this episode review. Who would have known? I wouldn't expect it either, but it's happening. <laughs> oh, boys. But anywho, um... Someone get PETA. <laughs> so, um, Sushi here wants to add in some mushrooms. And technically, it's poisonous mushrooms. And they fight about it. And somehow, the ingredients slip and drop into the chalice. Somehow, it created a monster. And it envelops them into the creature It's Mushroom itself. Man! Oh no, <laughs> it's another Mega Man villain. It's vill- a Yu-Gi-Oh oh, card. I see that there's a Mega Man villain about that as a joke, but I remember Mega Man X4. Oh. oh God. Was there a Mushroom Man in that? Kind of, yes. <laughs> do you do you know the Mushroom Man? The Mushroom Man! The Mushroom Man! <laughs> oh boy. Well, well, also, Tara, no one plays that card. If they do... It's ironic. No, 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 Silver. People do play those cards when it was Generation Zero. He plays Mushroom Man, <laughs> unironically. <laughs> so, anywho, um, the monster runs the mark and squirting its poisonous spore. Squirting yeah, that, sounds bad. I was what do you say, call that it? That doesn't sound right, Norman. Yeah, I know. Um, you said. <laughs> but, anyway, um, it does something with his spores, making everybody go cuckoo in the head. Yeah, it's poison, it poisons yes. everyone. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. And the teacher, Miss uh, Fen- Fenran, whatever her name is. Uh, sorry, uh, I don't remember her character name. But the lecturer and Diana uh, cast a spell that defused them. And the spell is called Luna Luna Lana. Someone plays Diffusion. <laughs> One card until the your, your fusion monster's gone. How fair is that? I tell you. Yeah, it's even the worst that, when someone does that. it on my Cyber and Dragon. Uh, oh, God. Could you just imagine on Elemental Hero? No, no, no. <laughs> this is not Yu-Gi-Oh! talk. Oh, boy. So, anywho, um, Diana and the lecturer um, save the day once again with their spell. And it's a high-level spell, according to the lecturer. And, yeah, um... We get to see our heroes getting called up to the, I'm going to say, principal's office. Not Dumbledore. Yeah, not Dumbledore. Let's call her not Dumbledore. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't brought up her name. Doesn't really matter. But anyway, um, the lecturer just says, you guys are in deep trouble. And as punishment, we are going to assign you to this parade. Um, the parade is called, what was the parade called again? But long story short. Uh, the school are going to do a show for the townsfolk, the normies in the village, and it is in reenactment of the witch hunt. Ooh, no. So we get to see witches getting dunk, um, marching through the crowd, so sadly, and nah, they, they got thrown to make those things, whatnot. Like, it's not a nice rendition of witches. Like, yeah. Yeah, no, no. Well, okay, here's the thing. The witch hunts were very much real and horrible. Mm-hmm. True that. And so I was thinking about this as I watched last night. Who here remembers Ghostbusters 2? I see I do. a bit of it, yes. Well, do you remember the scene where the Titanic arrives? Oh, God. Uh, it, it, was, mm-hmm. it was spooky and funny at the same time. But it was based off a tragedy, mm-hmm. a, a very real one, that you try a joke like that within a, the lifetime of a person who survived the Titanic or, or you know, was part of that witness. But then I thought, oh, I, I guess time transforms tragedies. They become sources for humor, which is what I'm seeing with this parade. And part of me is debating, you know, is this in bad taste to talk about? But then I remember J.K. Rowling actually did. Uh, talk about the witch hunts and how fun they were for the actual witches and wizards. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, th- their pitiful fires couldn't hurt them. <laughs> and I just thought, there's an element of bad taste in that. As as, And yet time softens the blow. I, I kind of shudder to think that maybe one day 
would 9-11 be a source of more comedy than serious reflection? And even now, people make jokes about it. I don't know. I mean, South Park. <laughs> South Park, yes. But in all honesty, I, I feel like 9-11 changed the world's outlook and spectrum and stuff. Like, if I do remember right, before 9-11, you guys don't have the TSA? We had it, but it was much, much, much more lax. Yeah. So because of that, things change a lot. And getting a visa to go to the States is also um, challenging. So because of certain events, things change. And I, I'm not saying that the witch hunts are in the same boat, but I'm just saying that certain tragedies change things. Welcome to the MBS show. We're talking about My Little Witch Academia, but really it's a 9-11 discussion. No! Surprise! No! Anywho. Um, well, it's, it's technically true. True. Anyway, we get to see um, Ursula also uh, telling the teacher, sorry, telling the students about uh, the events and whatnot. And hey, uh, we, we will appreciate your hard work and stuff. So um, she also mentions that you guys are not going to be the only one to participate in the parade because we got um, introducing first new character, Amanda O'Neill. Her thing that she did wrong was try to steal something in the vault and stole it with style. But she got caught, by the way. So, yeah. Also, we got another character named Constantine Ami... Oh, wow. Uh, let's say uh, Consent. That's what Constance. It, yeah, Constance. But uh, her deal is that she steals high-tech electronic device on school premise and tinkers with them. Uh, a technomancer. Cool. And But the thing is, she stole them. So, boo, bet on you. The other one, I, I got no idea. Um, her name is Jasmine Ka. Jasmine Ka. Uh, people Jasmine call, Ka. Yeah, people just call her Jasna. And her deal is she likes to eat a lot in class. And I think that's distracting or it distracts these other students. And somehow she has an unlimited supply of potato chips. What? And... She's definitely not healthy. What do you I mean? mean? She's eating all this junk food. It's definitely having uh, an impact on her body. I'm surprised that if most of her magic is used to keep her heart pumping. <laughs> you know, this reminds me of a Naruto character. Uh oh. Oh, Joji? Yeah. Like, his deal is that he consumes all those food to store in his body. And once he activates his jitsu, um, one specific jitsu, he becomes thin and spends it all. And I'm thinking this almost the same. Who knows? I haven't seen the series yet. I haven't seen anything to support that magic is linked to your food stores. Probably certain people with certain traits. Who knows? But anywho, uh, these are the other three that will be helping Akko with the parade. We get to see them in the same room discussing about what to do for the parade. And Ako is bent up out of shape because she doesn't like how the townsfolk are treating the witches. Like they, she's just saying that this is not fair. This is not how uh, the witches are. And she gets the bright idea to create a parade of joy and happiness to show that um, witches nowadays are different and awesome and stuff. You came to destroy us, but we're here to celebrate. Yay. Killing you with kindness. See, witches aren't that bad. Before we kill you with magic during the Great Witch Uprising. <laughs> Viva la revolution. <laughs> but by the way, in the background, we, we get to see a Fluttershy unicorn. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yep. This is already getting better. I know. But anyway, uh, Silver, w want to take this for a bit? Oh, sure thing. Well, to be honest, this is where things go south very quickly. Now, there's Amanda who shows off her dancing abilities, her skill... Flying a mop, she... Uh, fl flying a mop. <laughs> flying a broom. Because important distinction there. Mm -hmm. What I find interesting about it, though, is that there's no music during a dance choreography. And that's not a bad thing. I'm just thinking, whoa, that is a unique uh, directional choice. True so props there. But, of course, her skill and coordination, you can't learn that right away. A big theme in this is natural talent. So Akko does her best to match everyone to match their skills to their jobs. 
But it all starts to go wrong very, very fast. In fact, and it, it spirals out of control so quickly that it has a negative impact on Akko and her friends. Especially the ultimate low point, I think, is when Latte has this song she likes to sing. Apparently, it puts her in commune with local spirits. Uh, I forget if it's fairies. Yeah, it was fairies. Oh, okay, so uh, by the way... They sorry, resonate. Sorry, uh, I, I just have to point something out for the audience at home. If uh, something I say and Silver say are not in sync. Because I've watched the Japanese dub. So I'm reading subtitles when I watch this one. So when you say fairy, to me they say spirit. So yeah, out of sync. Huh. Uh, many terms across the world for the great unknown. The creative unknown, as it's called. True, true. I'm just saying for people who might be confused to what I'm saying and what Silver saying. And I'm just saying... <laughs> Waka waka. <laughs> oh god, no. Anyway, carry on. Carry on. Alright, so Latte has this song that both awakens and entertains mythical beings. And Akko really wants her to get involved, but she's so driven and so seized by energy that she's very clumsy and actually tears the scroll containing the song. I think that's the ultimate low point where Akko just seems almost irredeemable or unlikable. Yeah, and, and when I saw that, I, I, I felt like, this is like Pinkie Pie times 11. Oh, God, no. And so it only spirals from there because while Latte... Man, it sounds like I'm <laughs> describing a coffee drink. Okay. Well, she has a moment of anger we don't fully witness. She does basically kick Akko out of her life for a time. And in her frustration and unfocused energy... Akko then uh, insults Susie and basically declare, calls her a mushroom freak and says they're not friends anymore. And this is the thing about Akko. It's a trope I see in a lot of Japanese anime. A character who's not smart or coordinated or in control. And yet there's something about this naive innocence or, or foolish energy that attracts people to them. The greatest example would actually be Goku. I have another example that you might like. Oh? Uh, Sailor Moon. Oh, uh, yes. She is the, the klutz, the ditz, and yet everyone seems to get behind her. True. What's her name in English, by the way? Uh, well, for a time, she was known as Serena. Uh, what's it now? Because to me, I always know the Japanese name. I think we've gotten better about the whole dubbing, so it's still Usagi. Ah, all right. Cool. Honestly, I haven't got to watch a Sailor Moon dub in quite some time. So don't quote me on that, please. No, Usagi's right. Usagi's right. Her name in Japanese is Usagi, which is literally translated to rabbit. See, she's the moon princess or moon queen. And in Japanese folklore, it's um, bunnies making something in the moon. You know, it's, it's very local. Actually, while we're on the topic of Japanese, has anyone seen the Mulan teaser trailer? Wait, there's a Mulan teaser trailer for the live action movie? Yeah. Not yet. Oh, sadness. I don't like these. Oh, wow. Oh. I'm taking this way off topic. <laughs> yeah, well, this, this is a whole new conversation. I knew you were going to talk about remakes, but that's a whole new conversation. <laughs> no, I mean, okay. I, yeah. I, I'll just state why I'm excited for Mulan. I am excited for Mulan just because one of my favorite YouTubers is in it. And he plays the skinny... Remember the skinny soldier with the three guys, gangs? What is his name? It's... Honestly, it, I do not because... Confession time. I never saw Mulan in its entirety. Oh, really? No. What is a fun show? Hmm. Well, I'll just have to work on that then. Oh, well, anyway. Show. Sure, I thought Mulan was a movie. It is. Well, when I say show, you know what I mean. <laughs> but anyway, the quirky, uh, not so smart character. It's a big thing in Japanese entertainment that I've noticed. Whereas somehow the usually the antagonist, in this case, uh, Diana... Cavendish, mm -hmm. she is, well, she's resented by a great many of the characters because she's from a prestigious family and is constantly being fond and adored by the by the school staff. And these two really annoying uh, younger women who are just basically trying to leech off her yeah. uh, success. And by the way, there, there's a, a pun with their name. Uh, one is Barbara and one is Hannah. Oh, God. <laughs> now, there. <laughs> Again, this is reminding me of another anime I, I've seen called Kaleido Star. And it's very similar in that the lead heroine is highly emotional, very idealistic, but sometimes does, 
goes too far for her own good. Both her, I don't know how to put this, not rival, but but idol, in fact, is very proper and traditionalist, a bit like Diana. And so there's this conflict of the dreamer versus the pragmatist and how that further evolves. So I see these trends and these tropes repeating themselves through anime. That's not a criticism, but it's a look into a culture that I don't fully understand. I get what you mean, man, because in anime, a certain trope does work for them. And for us here, or for cartoon watchers, we can't really relate to those kind of tropes. So it's, it's, it's how do this? It's, I think it's cultural, in a sense. If I were in one of these scenarios, I'd be backing Diana because she is smart, uh, aware, in control. I wouldn't have a lot of faith in Akko. True, true. And yet Akko has this drive, this passion. Even after she's on the outs with her two best friends, she and the other girls go into town uh, trying to buy supplies and get sort of awareness. And yet they're, that's when they're harassed by the, this group of young boys who basically are looking forward to this as a chance to harass the witches who are still highly disliked. Even the mayor has a, a statement of how tedious he finds the witch uh, presence. I, I can see it. It's like, for me, I feel like this is going back to a trope. Like the trope of, oh, nobody really likes us. And then we do something cool and new that makes them like us. Oh, Nobody likes us. Everybody hates us. <clears throat> Guess we'll go we I'm worms. a lovable Pokemon. Well, you're a, you're a grass type, right? Yes. So grass types are strong against well, water types? Yes. Yes. Okay, well then water type same. <laughs> yeah. True that. Got you there. But yeah, um you you say that this youngsters, right? So um lead character for the gangsters or the youngsters is called Thomas. So Thomas is, well, a big mean jerk. He starts a fight with the witches. Is he a tank? <laughs> you wish. But no. Uh he starts the fight with the witches and the witches fight back with their magics. But it's soon discovered that beyond the walls of the school, their magic cure is very limited. And it gives out fast. Yep, yep. I mean, they only get to use it for like a minute or so. Although I do like that uh, Constance has a, um, has a power indicator at the bottom of her wand. I'm just like, oh, everyone should have that. Not all of them? Not all of them. Nope. Hashtag not all witches. Uh, okay. But Constance here is the technomancer. I, I I like her talent. I can't wait to see where the show takes her. This is a low point for Akko. She's lost her friends. She's lost her, uh, well, she's lost some optimism. Mm -hmm. And of all the things, this is the one time where Diana comes in and you re I really could use some choice words to describe her. Diana's philosophy on this has been that the whole event... The witch burnings, the persecution, is a very dark and insulting period in witch's history. So she'd rather just do away with this parade altogether. Even though uh, men, several of the team wanted to include her because of her natural talent. As a leader, yes. As a leader, as someone who could really bring a lot of uh, flair and panache to this happy time project, as, as Akko calls it. Yep, yep. Uh, while this is all happening, the mayor of the town um, hired some contractors to do away with the landmark where the witches sealed the great evil. To him, it's just superstitious mumbo jumbo. And one of the contractors says, uh, if anything goes wrong, it's not my fault. Well, the, co the contractor says, uh, hey, that's going to get you some negative karma. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah. Okay, that's what a contractor in Japan would say. <laughs> Here in America, it'd be like, eh, whatever, I'm on lunch. <laughs> well, I mean, they do say that karma's a... No, I'm not going to finish the yep. sentence, but you know what I mean. Yeah, you... Karma's a Diana in this one instance. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There you go, that works. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. <sighs> I, mean, it, I mean, the way Diana... Diana, I find an interesting character. She is heir, She is part of this prestigious family, and you can tell that the demands of it are really weighing on her she feels like she's got all this stuff to live up to 
And yet, so in a way, she resents Akko for her clumsiness and free spirit. And yet at the same time, I think secretly admires her. And yet both both state, look, I just can't stand you. We can't be friends. <laughs> Watch as they become friends throughout the series. True that. <laughs> But after after all this negativity, after Akko has driven away Latte and Susie, after they've been humiliated by these bully boys, and now even Diana is thumping on Akko, this is where, I guess, the fool trope really starts to show its positive traits. Instead of uh, giving up, throwing in the towel, or just saying, this is ridiculous, I'm done, she just says, you know what? No, I'm not going to lo- I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to throw in the towel. I'm going to make this work. And she goes into full training montage. You need a montage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody montage. needs a montage. Yeah. And the best part about this kind of treat is when the chips are down, you work hard at it. And she does. She uh, practiced her firework spell. She practiced the broom dancing things. And she even wrote a sorry letter to Suchi and Lotte. I guess this is another dub sub thing. It to to my ears, it was uh, usually pronounced Susie. Susie, okay, yeah, Sus- yeah, because I'm <laughs> I'm looking at the name here, and it's S U C Y, and the enemy says Suchi. Do they really call him Sushi? Suchi. Oh, there's no H, so I guess I don't see it. I always heard. Okay, I gotta admit, our our podcast recently have made me doubt my hearing because there was <laughs> Apple. Core, not <laughs> Apple Cord. Yeah. And then there was, oh, what did Safi say? Some, oh, yeah. Uh, her M sounded like an M. Oh, whoa, that one. Megara. Mm. Oh, yeah. It was like, I heard an N. And I was like, <laughs> what is that? Yeah. No, um, so, uh, sorry. I might be going deaf, is what I'm saying. No, nah, man. <laughs> you're not going deaf. I'm the one that's deaf in one ear. I know the difference. So, uh, so no, um, we've. Sorry, what? <laughs> Don't pull that trick hey. on me. <laughs> <laughs> Speak up, laddie. Me. But no, uh, with Apple Me. Core and Apple Core, I, I heard Apple Core, so you're not the only one. So, and I heard Susie, not Suchi, but I was listening to the dub. And I'm listening to the, well, Japanese dub, so. Yeah. But basically, Akko's on the outs with most of her friends. The others really don't have much belief in it, but she presses on, finds a way to get most of them to come back uh, by, with those really well done uh happy time uh envelopes yep, yep. and so i guess after hitting this mas- massive low point with latte we're now seeing akko at her best and it doesn't absolve what she did but it's like okay now i can see the positive traits of her on display and that's vital with the character yeah true that and the one of the problems about her idea in parade was there's no energy source to well uh, power the spells because uh, that's one of the things that uh, Lotte noticed and wanted to bring up to uh, Akko but within her excitement they fought so when Diana talked about her about how she became a witch because she was inspired by um, her idol Trixie and whatnot, and <laughs> I forgot the name what was it called what, what was it called Shiny, shiny chariot. chariot. The shiny chariot. Okay. Uh, so anyway, um, she was inspired by Trixie, and <laughs> the, her wand. Her wand. She remembered that her wand can store some power, so she went to the philosopher's stone, and well, it dropped some energy, and darn it, it worked. And that that's a rare event. The shiny rod. Giggity. Obey my rod. <laughs> so anywho, um, they are the parade. Air parade, that which going really well. I mean, I'm I'm rather stunned at how much Akko pulled it all together. Yeah, and she did it all in one night. Yeah, I don't know how much time has passed. The the what was it? Two weeks or so? Something like that? No, no that that was something different. Uh, but not a lot of time. Yeah, it's not quite my little pony level of accelerated time <laughs> scale, but it's but it's comparable. Yeah. And Akko, well, Akko did it, so that's something else. Well, if you think about it, since this this one does include witches, maybe she cast a spell to slow down time? Knowing her, that would just mean she'd reverse her own age. She became a toddler. Oh, God, no. 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> but yeah, it seems that everybody said that, well, any, uh, let's say friend B's, uh, group B are with Akko and they want to start the parade. But Akko just says, wait, uh, we got to wait for Su- Susie and Lotte to come. And yeah, while they wait, it seems that there's a malfunction and fireworks activate and people or the public says or public thinks that oh has the witches event start and well when they say start you have to go so they perform they perform and it's going well really really well and by the way there's some random uh, in the crowd that kind of have the spotlight and it's like a short guy with a tall girl from what I understand, these two are um, characters for, I think the guy is the one that made Little Witch and the tall woman is the guy, the girl that created Steven Universe. Huh. huh. Where, how does Steven Universe play into this? Yeah, I'm curious. The creator for Little Witch is a big fan of western cartoons he drew a lot of my little pony he likes uh, steven universe and so on and i think what the creator of steven universe noticed it and invite him on to direct a episode and I- i'll link it to you once we're done with this and you can see the art style that looks very similar and so on but he came on and well i think they like each other's work and you know they, they just cross well, good on him. Yeah. It's nice when talent, especially across cultures, recognizes one another. True, true. But anywho, uh, talking about talents, we get to see uh, Amanda performing on a broomstick. And it is really awesome. Like, things are just going well, too well. Oh, yeah. It's like it's like a rule. Oh, your your heroes are succeeding? Well, time to put the kibosh on that. Yeah. And it's not like anyone said what could possibly go wrong or anything. No, nobody did. Nobody did that. Well, Akko's in charge, so oh, you know God. something's going to yeah. go wrong. I mean, oh, yeah, definitely. Although I am impressed by how she makes she makes the booms look like people dancing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, she found a way to match the magic with the talent. So none of them could match uh, Amanda's skill. Except brooms, yep. the very thing she's controlling. True, true. Mm-hmm. I like that we get to see Akko is smart in her own way. Mm-hmm. But the bully boys, however, get to say, say, okay, time for us to be uh, persnickety youngsters. <laughs> yes, that's exactly how they said <laughs> it. Don't question it. So, and I got to say, this is where it starts to reflect badly on the town. Where Where is security that you can steal something right off a float. Yeah. The, Uncontested. Yeah, the, 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 the. There's cops, by the way. They show cops in the streets and whatnot. And they're just dumb. But one of the few things I noticed that the, the general public were very entertained by the witch's performance. So, like what? Um, uh, Diana said that the whole uh, witch hunting or the whole parade is kind of a negative and I think Akko is doing something great, doing something positive to change the public audience outlook on them. But it's just bad apples in the crowd like Thomas and his group who, well, stole the shining rod. And, well, because of that, chaos ensues because Thomas went to the landmark where the what you call this um, seal monster is at and because of the rod it holds power let's just say that thomas is not having a good time if you take a magical item near the titan resting ground <laughs> you're gonna have a bad time true that uh, by the way uh in the dub they called it a titan in the uh japanese dub they call it a kyojin Huh. Oh, for a second, I thought you were going to say they call it a kaiju. No, no, no. <laughs> that piece, I call it Doomfist. <laughs> no, but um, it's funny because in the dub, the subtitle, they call it a giant. But when they pronounce it, it call it a titan or a kyojin. And people who got no idea what a kyojin is, it's uh, Shingeki no kyojin, attack on titan. So, yeah, stuff. So, 
So it's the same idea, just different words for different cultures. Probably, yes. Okay. But uh, I call it Doomfist because let's let's really break it down. It has one giant arm made of metal. True. It has a very powerful punch. Mm-hmm. And yet all it ends up taking is one shot <laughs> from a really cheap, <laughs> cheap arrow that it's dead. It's done. And I'm playing and I'm trying to get on point and I really like this character, but he's got so many counters. And what were we talking about again? Anyway, we get to see Diana flying around noticing the giant grabbing Thomas. And yeah, uh, I-, I think because of that, all of the inanimate object in town so suddenly gains sentient and is causing a ruckus. I think it's more a fracas. Yeah. Either or. <laughs> Although, watching all these things come to life, all these cars spouting teeth and mouths mm-hmm. and eyeballs under awnings and umbrellas, uh, funny enough, I was kind of flashing back to the real Ghostbusters. Uh-huh. They had toys just like this all the time. Oh, yeah, I remember that. So, it's funny how... This anime, very well done, very enjoyable, but it reminds me of so many other pieces of entertainment I've watched. It's cool. It's cool that way. Well, I guess, well, I guess is, it, is it a pro or a minus? I think it's a pro. It reminds me of entertainment I've enjoyed and in a way shows it's tapping into the same energy. I know a lot. I know there are critics online and beyond who would say, oh, no, if it, if you only like it because of nostalgia, then it's not real entertainment. No. If relying too much on nostalgia, that's a negative. If relying too much on nostalgia, that is negative. But if it's just tapping on it, nothing bad. <laughs> you just want to tap it? Yep, yep. Oh, my, no. <laughs> but anywho. Oh my. Bayon- Bayonetta isn't even in this. <sighs> She's a witch too, by the way. A hair witch, yep. if I She's remember. She's got him right. under a spell. <laughs> But anywho, uh, while the chaos is happening, um, the teacher, Ursula, uh, creates a megaphone spell and somehow, here's the thing, I I would have thought that she would be calm and tell the general audience to uh, form a single file and evacuate the area. Oh no, no, what she does is in sumo panic. In sumo panic, but also presents it as part of the show. Which is a genius move, by the way. Really? I think it's a little irresponsible. But at the same yeah, time... Yeah, I kind of think the same way. Yeah, but at the same time, too, I think she and Diana created a um, wall spell to wall off the general audience. And meanwhile, there's this really orange guy in the in the crowd saying, I love that spell. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> Please d- d- tell me your secrets. God. But anywho, um, Ursula just narrates the situation and quotes, tell the students what to do. So, yeah, um, the girls on the float uh, do what they need to do to make things um, a show and do their best. And yeah, uh, they put Akko onto a catapult and catapult her to the giant's hand and save the jerk Thomas. Although I love that as the Titan throws them, oh, sorry, as Doomfist throws them free, uh, she lets go of Thomas to grab the shiny rod. It's like, well, <laughs> we know where your priorities yep, are. Yep. And well, while Thomas is saved by Diana, and I think Thomas has a crush on her, um, Akko's going uh, to... What, get, what made it obvious? The a heart in the eyes? Probably. <laughs> uh, but, Lots of blushing. But... The Akko's dead because nobody's saving her life. Yep, she is dead. Well, yeah, Di- Diane. Diane is just like, okay, you know what? I'm okay with this. <laughs> <laughs> but then a mysterious figure comes to save the day. Oh no, who could it be? Uh, Darkwing Duck. Oh no, who could it be? Really? <laughs> well, I, I actually, I, I love uh, Susie's dialogue as she rescues Akko. <laughs> Uh, did you remember what? I never listened to what you say anyway, so I didn't be- I didn't believe you when you said we weren't friends. Oh, wow. Um, the Japanese dub is different because your word is always unreliable, so that doesn't count. <laughs> I kind of like the dub sentiment more. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the dub sounds more hilarious. I, <laughs> uh, I should say the American dub. Yeah. English dub. Yeah. But I do really like Susie's character. I mean... She loves to test her poisons <laughs> on everybody, especially Akko. I mean, 
again, this isn't someone I'd want to know in real life, but within fiction, she's just sort of this charming, bizarre character. True that, true that. Who both en- entertains and terrifies me. <laughs> oh, well. But still, the group... Well, I'm just going to fast forward a bit. The group plays catch with the rod and gives it to Akko. And when Akko has it, Susie's broom has been stolen by the giant and they're falling to their doom. Below them is a crowd of sentient monster things that want to eat them alive. Oh no, whatever would they do? Terra, whatever would they do? Would anyone save them? Sing a song, of course. Oh, that would be cool. Although I can't sing an extra song because that's copyright infringement. Oh, no. Yeah, we want to we want to be able to actually show this podcast. To people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But anywho, um, Tara, who who sang the song? Oh, a uh, nice sweet latte, of course. Again, I feel like I'm talking at a Starbucks. So wait, y- <laughs> they call it latte? Her name is well, I think it was Lotte. Yeah, Lotte. Yeah. Is yeah. it? Oh, why have you been calling her latte? I don't know. You guys. because it sounds because it sounds like latte. Oh. It's one letter's difference. <laughs> it's true that. I just want a mocha right now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, if they introduce if they introduce that Lotte has a friend named Mocha, that would be awesome. Uh, I although I'd be thinking of the Moulin Rouge uh, song, <laughs> Creamy Mocha Marmalade. <laughs> but anywho, <laughs> putting that out. Oh yep, yeah, now we're copyright strike. Okay, no. But anywho, uh, we get to see Lotte singing a really magical song, and it calms the spirit down and puts them to sleep. Except for Doomfist. Uh, Doomfist is angry. and Yes, well, probably because he's been put to sleep like a dozen times because he's got such a big hitbox and Anna can just fire <laughs> one dart and then you got to just sit there and watch everyone play while they teabag you. <laughs> uh, it's okay. But anyway, um, the reason why Lotte is l- It's not okay! <laughs> the reason why Lotte is late is because she's been sewing... A witch hat for Akko that's similar to Shiny Chariot? Yes, indeed. And they make up. And they are friends now. So, yay. Awesomeness. Although, I do I do love that Akko is, admits she was only thinking of herself. And that's good. You know, it shows that, it sh- it shows that she does have the ability for self-reflection and to understand... Because the thing that made her unlikable was at first she didn't even seem to be aware of why. She just kept saying, well, I didn't mean to. Why is she upset? Because you did it. Yeah. Because, it, you know, people don't just turn their emotions off on a on a switch. So it's really great to see Akko so happy and loving to see her friend. Yeah. And admitting her fault. Not, not like being berated for it endlessly. In fact... I, I thought uh, Lotte, Lotte was very uh, supportive in how she described Akko's most positive traits. Yeah, that's the thing too. And it was a really nice, um, I won't say comeback, but reconnaissance? Well, I forgot the word. Reconciliation? Yes, reconciliation. But still, um, the threat's not over because Doomfist has, uh, well, he, he's gotten out of the ground and is ready to punch a fool. That's right. Give him a one punch, man. Yeah. And before he starts punching, he's going to step on the mare because he don't like mares. Oh, no. Mare's going to die. Well, considering this is at least 90% his fault. Yeah, true that, true that. Yeah. So uh, we won't get that because Ursula saves his life. And, yeah, he, he complains about the current situation and Ursula just says, who was the idiot that tried to take away the seal and whatnot? Yeah, it's your fault. Mm. So, anyway, Diana creates the wall spell, and Ursula just tells the students, or the three of them, what to do. And Akko realized we need to cast the spell, or the fusion. And the, 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 the nullification spell. Yes. Oh, I get it. They're going to nerf Doomfist again. Why did they keep doing that? <laughs> because nobody likes him. He's cheap. Oh, I don't you even play as Doomfist. <laughs> oh, you both bite your tongues. You bite your tongues hard. <laughs> I 
don't know who I mean anymore. That's the sad part. Ha <laughs> ha! I've I've destroyed your reality. Well, uh, yeah, sad. But anywho, they started show. Well, try to form the show, and they cast a spell, and it wraps the titan or giant in their magical notification spell. But it seems that the titan is too strong. And it's trying to overtake the kids. But somehow, um, everybody raises their hand for Goku and <laughs> gives them spirit power. Lend me your energy! And here, here's the part where, okay, I have to be honest. I was not expecting this outcome. Were you, did you think Doomfist would kill everybody? No, no. Um, I, I knew he would be defeated, but not in the way that it would happen. Because... Uh, I would have thought that, okay, uh, Aku would perform the shiny arrow thing and just shoot it. So, yay, like normal, I think, like what, in the previous special or the premiere. But no, no, uh, things happen and I thought, oh, okay, maybe it's a big giant robot because they're done by Trigger and Trigger was part of uh, Gainax and whatever, so probably Gorilla Gun. Nope. SSSS grid man. Oh, yeah. No, not that too. But anywho, uh, she created a ballista. And the other <laughs> part is that she is in full costume. Not only her, but Lotte and Suchi are too. Well, I just appreciate if a shining arrow does a lot, little good, a shining ballista <laughs> will do a lot of good. <laughs> I know. I, I mean, there's no half measures with this oh, yeah. one. We, it's actually pretty cool. They got a ballista out of that small rod. Yeah, I know. I I think that what uh, Hanzo would really love this. Hanzo would love it. Merrick is off to the side. Well, my rod's cooler. It lets me show off my sexy midriff. <laughs> oh, boys. But anywho, with that, the group uh, shoots the ballista arrow, uh, striking Doomfist in the heart and making him into a little cute giant. How would you even... Wait, a little cute giant? Look what? at her face. She's so cute. Well, yeah. Oh, it is quite cute. It is, but you face got you're, two you're faces. <laughs> two faces. Oh no! <laughs> Meanwhile, in the crowd, I'm Batman. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> so yeah, they succeed. They succeeded in this. Yeah. To show their appreciation, they still pelt the girls with tomatoes because yeah. that's what nice people do when they're grateful. <laughs> right? No, wrong. But at least it's done in a um, endearing way instead of a mean way. And even Diana uh, voiced her support for the girls. True, true. And then she's like, "You did. You made a better spell than me." And then you messed it up. <laughs> it's like, wait, how? I don't know. Because they used the shiny arrow ballista. I don't know. Shiny ballista. That just sounds so cool. Everyone at home, just say the words "shiny ballista" and just. See if you don't feel at least 15% cooler. Shining Ballista. Well, what about a Shining Torterra? <laughs> shining Torterra? Well, there you go. That means it's a rarity. It's much harder to get. But it's EV and IV are bad. But but I thought we concluded that you were a, a very whitish Torterra. <laughs> you call me fat. Why? No, whitish. Whitish? Not white. Yeah. Huh. Oh, God. People are going to get so confused if they didn't listen to the previous track. Well, it, why not? I don't know. I mean, I thought everyone watches every single episode we do. I hope so. <laughs> but here we go, Tartara. You you are not wide. You are white. You are the pastiest <laughs> of Pokemon. Uh, is that a compliment or? <laughs> I don't know. But anywho. <laughs> I, it's what you choose to make of it. <laughs> oh, boys. But anywho, with that, episode ends. Well, it's actually a special, episode. not an episode. A movie ends. A movie. Yes. And nobody died that we know yes, of. Yes, indeed. I mean, I mean, there was a giant hand and then later a t uh, monstrous titan. You sure no one got stepped on? I don't know. Not even a little? <laughs> no. But anywho, um, yes. Uh, uh, final thoughts. Silver, what do you think? Well, actually, Sorry, I, I want to make one little quick statement right. before we go to final thoughts. Right. So... Yes. 
you got a sleeping giant out in public, like on the floor, and then the mayor's just like, hmm, I'll turn this creature into an amusement park and put my statue on top of it. I'll be rich. Like, what? Uh, that's just only in his mind. But still, um, I'm guessing that the witches' council will probably seal him away in the dungeons, something like that. Well, let's hope the so. Mayor? No, the council, which which is council? Well, why 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 not why not seal up the mayor? <laughs> I think that would make a lot of sense. Yeah, public figure. Oh, yeah, definitely. Can't can't do much. See, I have the white tortera seal of approval. <laughs> no comment. Let me get my blue polka balls to celebrate. Oh no! Oh god! <laughs> Anyway, my antagonism. Uh, final yes, thoughts? Yes. Unless Tara wants to say something well, more? Yes. Nope, yes. I'm good. Tara, right. Tara, speak f- for, to us. No, I'm speaking, and I just said, no, I'm good. <laughs> okay. Uh, I really enjoyed this. It, it's a little, it's start, harder at the start because everything has to go wrong. And you have to see the characters at their worst before you can see them at their best. And sometimes that's hard to hang on to. But, uh, Akko's just enthusiasm and energy is infectious and helps uh, sort of redeem her presentation. So I was very glad to see her rally. And everybody got a chance to shine. I can't say, aside from the bully boys, there's no one, I think, or in, and the mayor, there's no one you're meant to really dislike, not even Diana. True, I mean, but Diana has, well, um, at first Diana was kind of the bully, but we seen in the previous episode that she's just doing her job and she wants to do the right thing by school standards. So she speaks down to Akko because she's not doing things the way that it's supposed to do, but somehow is still in the school. Honestly, I never really viewed her as a bully type character, mostly because she's not trying to make herself feel good at Akko's expense, but rather... She's trying to uphold a standard, and she views Akko as, well, undermining that. True that. And yeah, I see her as like a you know she she's like basically the perfect student with good grades and stuff like that. And she sees everyone else as like, well, not everyone else, but basically Akko is like a low grader with low scores, and she's not that special. But I, what I meant by bully is that uh, she's the antagonist to the protagonist. Oh, there you go. Uh, funny enough, this also reminds me of the relationship in Kill a Kill. Uh, yes, but that's a bit different because uh, in Kill a Kill, uh, Ryoko, or what was it, Ryoko? Uh, she's not like Akko. Um, Akko is the other one. Oh, man. You know, the other character. I forgot the name. It's been a while. It has, but I see the similarity. One character is the head of the social order, the perfect representation the other is sort of a rebellious idea and who who just undermines the establishment and there is this constant tension between them as a result so it's funny you can have it in a show like kaleido star where it's admiration but fraught with conflict or you can have it like kill a kill where it's over the top action and you can have it here where it's comedy but also heartfelt. True, true. I mean, all trope works if it's done correct or done properly with a lot of respect. It fails when the creators don't respect it. Well, no argument here. Mm-hmm. No. Nope. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'm sorry for stealing your thunder, Silver. Uh, anything more to add? Uh, nope. All right. Nope, nope, nope. Just that I had all fun. Right, all right. Terror about yourself? I really enjoyed the special. I mean, there was that one part where I... I was kind of concerned about where Akko had a moment and that she was fighting with her friends. But later on, she redeemed herself and it caught my attention again. And I really enjoyed it from the beginning to the end. Just that one little part kind of uh, annoyed me. I understand all understandable. And as for me, I have to agree with all of you. And with the uh, Akko part when she has to be at her lowest, it's one of those things where it was so tropey that it kind of annoyed me. But I think that's where we need to be at to understand the character, to see her rise up through adversity. And you know what? It's It works. It, it's really awesome. By the way, um, on a side note, out of the three new characters, the B team, uh, who do you like more? Jotaro, why don't you start? Why do I have to start? I thought it was age before beauty. Uh, in... 
Well, then you you start either way because it's my foot before your ass. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so anyway, we got Amanda, we got Constantine, Constantin. Uh, uh, she's German. Constance. Yeah, Constance. And also wait, is that yeah, Constance? Yeah. And we also got just Minka. She's um, if I'm not mistaken, Russian. Yeah. So out of the three, who do you like? Just curious. I like Constance. I mean. Uh, she's very quiet, but I like all the stuff she builds. Like with the, um, she uses her wand, puts on a machine, then she uses it as a gun, and then she's put like fireworks and all this stuff into that machine with the boat, and she's even got like the sail with the shining rod in between. And like even though she's quiet, she could still give off emotions just with her face. You can tell how she's feeling. Yeah, good call. Good call on that. He's nice. Mm-hmm. And Silva. I'm a fan of Amanda, both for her uh, prowess, but also the fact that while she is this sort of rebel and can be aggressive, she also demonstrates a lot of care and emotional sensitivity. She's sort of the the steady balance while Akko and the others are st- stuck in flux. And for me, I still want to say Amanda O'Neill, because the way I look at her at the beginning, oh, she's the American rebel, like, oh, rebel, rebel, rebel. And her lousy attitude at the beginning, but when she's in the bedroom and she doesn't really portray that, she's just doing it for kicks, like stealing the things because I can do it kind of thing. And she's showing that, hey, look at me, I'm great at this. And at the end, you you don't see her as the bully trope. Um, At first, I thought she would be the rebel slash bully kind of character, but no, she's friendly which is surprising. But uh, everybody says their thing. And honestly, I would say Amanda, but just for variety's sakes, I'm going to go for Justinka. Because she's just so cute. <laughs> and she is nice. She shares the food. It's not like she uh, only hogs it all to herself. Yeah, and uh, I think what? Aku did a good job. She rewards her with chips. <laughs> would you like a chip? <laughs> no. It's, it is filled with happiness. <laughs> Yay. They're magically delicious. <laughs> By the way, um, you guys listen to this in the English dub. Did any of the characters have an accent? Like uh, Jasminka, did she speak anything in Russian accent? Not really, she had... but she has a... like Not that she has an accent, but she has a f- weird, funny voice. Maybe you can interpret that as an accent. Nothing hyper-pronounced or, or stereotypical. Mm, okay, so not much then. All right, all right. So, anywho, um, that's our review of Little Witch Academia, uh, The Enchanted Parade. I really like it. Thank you, Jeffrey, for recommending this to us. And, well, there's more on the future. There's this TV series. So, yeah. Two TV series. <laughs> Torterra, Torterra and I found that out the last time. <laughs> yeah. Yep. No, 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 no. no. I, I, um, I, I think that was my fault for not highlighting and yeah, okay, for the audience at home who got no idea what's going on or what we're talking about, when we first did the first Little Witch Academia review, I specifically mentioned it, Little Witch Academia, with the IMDb page to the premiere or the pilot episode. Uh, what my co-hosts were thinking of is the episode series. So they watch what, one or two episodes, right? Yes. Yeah, I think like the first three. Yeah, the first three. And when we started, like, wait, what? You guys didn't watch this? Oh, no. No, it's not that we didn't watch it, but me and Silva were talking. It's like, oh, yeah, there's a cockatrice and everything. And you were confused. Like, a cockatrice? I don't recall seeing a cockatrice. Yeah, where was the, where was the dragon? What dragon? <laughs> Norman, were you high again? Were you chasing the dragon? Oh, Man, he's been too busy miss- hanging around me and my tree. Oh god, no. Oh, Miscommunications oh. are awesome sometimes, but no, um, this time yeah. around, oh god, uh, I think <laughs> what Sappy mentioned, oh, um, she didn't click on my link. All she knew that we have to do Little Witch. <laughs> Boy, so some days you just can't win. I know. No. But still, uh, it is a fun show. Thank you, Jeffrey. And we will do this series. Um, as for now, I'm thinking there's only a season. I think. Well, okay, technically two seasons because there's two shows. I don't know why. 
No, 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 no. It's um, <laughs> the pilot episode doesn't count towards the season because it's kind of a reboot. Wait, I have to rewatch all the episodes again. No, if you remember it, you don't really need to. But anyway, yeah, because I yes. saw all the episodes already from season one, season two. <laughs> Wait, what? I'm really? so confused. Oh, wow. Okay. Anywho, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the Show, And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on the Twitters under MLP Silver Quill, which is also the uh, screen name I use on DeviantArt, where I post Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight comics. Uh, you can find me on YouTube just to search for Silver Quill or After the Fact, and I shall appear... And on Wednesdays, I post on Equestria Daily with either a comic review or editorial. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, by the way, Silver, did you do any uh, Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight for the China release? No, right? Not yet, because it took me by surprise. And with BronyCon approaching and I have a lot of work to do, I'm like, I don't know. I thought I was going to get at least a little bit of a break from it. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to say bad things, but I don't think those count. The kind of do, but the kind of don't. I mean, I don't know. I'm confused. Yeah, because uh, you know what? This is uh, another story for a different day. By the time this episode comes out, it's already done. But yeah, um, go look for Silver, and you will be at BronyCon, right? I shall be at BronyCon, as, as will uh, Sapphire Heart Song. We'll both be vending, and I have the honor of being a community guest. Ah, awesome, awesome, awesome. And yeah. Uh, catch Silver on the internets um, and also catch Silver on the well, BronyCon. He'll be there. Be sure to ask Silver a lot of questions if he looks like he is in a hurry. Because I'm probably <laughs> trying to get to the bathroom, which is on the other, opposite side from a vending table. Ah! Norman! <laughs> yes? How could you betray me? First you suggest adult diapers and now you're doing this? <laughs> Honestly. All right, Torterra, my threat of foot to rump is withdrawn. I'm going to ex- instead point that towards Norman. Oh, look at that, Norman. Now the sights are on you. Oh, God, no. Uh, at least he's doomfist and I don't need to worry. Oh, t- you bite your tongue. I'll one-shot you, boy. <laughs> I'm not you'll throwing. You'll go throwing. one-punch man on you. Uh, not if I heck you first. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. You're, you're, not, you're taking all the fun out of the game. <laughs> true, true. But anyway, uh, Tara, what about you? I always called you a hack, but I didn't know it was <laughs> literal. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, the good people could find me on Facebook, DV Night Twitter, or YouTube under the name Tortero1324. It's as easy as 123. What is 1324? I got no idea. <laughs> uh, yes, we, he'll be there. And you'll be going to Brunicon too, right? Yes, I will also be at BronyCon. I am not a community guest, though, and I'm not being at any vendors. I'll just be exploring. So if you ever want to catch me, the Torterra, all you got to do is find me. And throw a Pokeball at him. <laughs> yes, make sure it's a blue uh, blue Pokeball. I'm pretty sure that would be the butt of jokes. People will just get, like, Pokeballs and throw them at me. <laughs> I just I hope they're cool. soft and plushy and not actual <laughs> steel Pokeballs. Oh no, that means wait, the you guys know that there's a Pokeball shaped power bank? Power bank? Yes. Um you know what's that? Isn't that like a portable charger or something? Yeah, a portable charger. We we oh, call okay. it the power bank. I, I got no idea what you call it. Oh, okay. I'm just looking online for foam Pokeballs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh warning shots, I guess. <laughs> Oh, I can already see it now. I'll just be walking around, and then I just get hit by a Pokeball. I turn around, and it's silver. <laughs> Yay. Oh, here. It's called a Great Ball. Oh, God. Oh, great Balls of Fire. 2.5-inch Pokeball toy Great Ball. Soft foam, <laughs> so it's perfect. <laughs> I'm just oh. like, hi, Tartara. Great Ball. Great Ball. Great Ball. <laughs> oh, God. Why am I not catching him? The show's a lie, that's why. Oh boy, so anywho, uh, also this is Crime Radio on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay, to stay up to date and also Stitch Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on com. Links are in the show notes. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me, 
Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Jeffrey, and also myself. Like, thank you so much, guys. You are great. So, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I'm a Doomfist player. And I am a black and white Torterra with a little bit of purple on his trees. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode. Yes, sure. See ya. I'm not throwing, you're throwing. Leave me alone! Great ball, great ball. Brody Khan's gonna be nuts. Oh yes, for sure. I can only hope. <laughs>